Guy Ritchie never ceases to create an interesting premise with his films. And just look at this cast. But is the movie good? The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare is a solid time at the movies, thankfully. It's pretty slick, entertaining, humorous, and has a story that's easy to root for. Nazis do make the ultimate movie villains after all. Now the film isn't perfect, and some of my typical problems with Guy Ritchie films boil to the surface yet again, as it is unfortunately a lot of style over substance. But man, the style that's here is great. Henry Cavill is clearly having the time of his life in this role, oozing swagger, confidence, and a likable smugness in every scene he speaks. His borderline sociopathic behavior poises dark humor is a breath of fresh air for those who to accuse him of being wooden in his roles. You gotta show a little bit of range in that fun sense. I love that guy. But Alan Richson, if you've never seen Reacher, he's he's great. He's the true standout here. His comedic timing is perfect. His stature is just imposing in every frame and when he fights, it is truly a sight to behold. I wasn't prepared for the brutality here, but it's quite visceral and supremely entertaining. On the action movie front, this really does deliver more than I expected it to. And while some of these casting decisions are perfect for the characters and they're likable, they're largely wasted in a lot of other places. Henry Golding is a charismatic actor with a fantastic entrance. He's snake eyes now with Superman and Alan Richardson is Aquaman and Hawk and now he wants to be Batman and he's Jack Reacher. Like there's so many roles these guys have. So you have somebody like Henry Golden who's got a fantastic entrance and he's almost for immediately forgotten about. Hero Tiffin, I hope I'm saying that right, has a couple witty lines in action, but same there. And then there's huge buildup for Alex Pettifer, who I, I I don't know if I'm saying that right. And I didn't even recognize him. It's been a while since I've seen him in any, any movie. All this build up for him only to become the exposition guy. And as great as Cavill and Richson do, nearly everyone in the film has no clear motivations and there's zero character build up. Isaac Gonzalez as a Jewish spy has some weight to it that provides for some incredible tension in her subplot later. And she has great camaraderie with always reliable Babs Alusa Mokun. I, apologies on pronunciation. They both have some incredible scenes that get some nail biting plot moments to cut through and they deliver it with grace and deadly effectiveness. I can't really truly get over how great the cast is all around. That entire subplot really affects the pacing of the film. We spend large timely chunks building that up when that time could have been better spent fleshing out Henry Cavill and company. Plot wise, I'm not sure what you would remove or even if I wanted anything gone, but the more interesting swashbuckling part of the film gets straight from too often. So it's possible the solution was to actually include 10 to 15 more minutes of scenes with the crew on the boat. The end result currently feels technically lighter, but feels uneven. However, all of it does lead to a tense, rousing finale that's pretty pulse pounding. After 90 minutes of bursting personality, witty humor that'll have you smirking and a head bumping soundtrack along the way, such an explosive finale brings it all home with an all out good landing. Even a tease of franchise potential and I am all for it. With the uneven distribution of focus, zero character development or emotional attachment, it hurts the payoff at the end regarding the information cards about the real life figures. Now it's still a nice touch and mild spoilers beware. Seriously. I loved Ian Fleming being one of the intelligence officers and how informed that Gus inspired James Bond and how Cavill is just always shy of becoming Bond, forever Bond adjacent kind of in his roles. I'd watch it again and maybe a sequel if they want could take it a step further and hammer home those characters. It's got everything else that's just missing a heart. And not every character needs a character arc and not every film needs thematic content but a bit more of an emotional hook goes a long way. Also more banter between the crew please. All in all I had a good time. It's the good kind of slick entertainment, even if there's not a ton to say beyond the surface level. It is a solid time at the movies. I give The Ministry of Ungentlemanly Warfare 3.5 out of 5 stars. Comment what you think of it, and remember, always look for the good.